So I had to switch to this M1 MacBook Pro for a month because my 16 inch died on me. And link below for the food story. Hey guys, welcome back. Mindy here and today we are talking about my review of the M1 MacBook Pro. This is the base model M1 Mac and it's been my main machine for one month. Basically, the MVP that pulled me through December and a lot of videos in December were actually edited off this. So, pretty cool. One thing that we were mostly concerned about with the M1 Max is its compatibility with other apps. And I was surprised, surprised to find that a lot of the apps that I used were already updated and compatible with the M1 Mac, except for some few, which I'll be talking about later. So these are the apps that I use. When you click to download them, there'll be a pop-up asking you if you want to download the version for the M1 chip or the Intel chip Max. And that's how you know if it's compatible. And I believe that as time passes, more and more apps will be updated for the M1 Max. So really, kudos to these companies who created stuff for us early adopters. Anyway, you don't really have to worry if the app isn't updated for the M1 Max. Apple has the Rosetta 2 in place, and this is basically Apple's translation software, or rather, it's Apple's way of transiting from Intel Chip Max to M1 Max, like this. So if the app isn't compatible, this pops up automatically, and Apple will ask you to install Rosetta 2. It's pretty simple and it's great that Apple has this in place, but sometimes it just doesn't work and the app just ends up bouncing up and down this dock and just not launching. Or even when it works, sometimes it might just be too slow. For instance, Lightroom. Lightroom was so freaking slow, I could not bear it. <laughs> Each time I click on a picture to edit, it takes forever to load. One great thing about Lightroom is syncing edits across pictures. And guess what? That takes forever as well. <laughs> Not to mention, export times were really unbearable. Here's the export time comparison on the M1 Mac versus the Intel 16-inch MacBook Pro. It's been a while since I've experienced so much lag and wait time while editing photos on a computer so if you're an editor who needs lightroom on your mac i would suggest holding off this m1 mac until they release software updates for lightroom or the entire adobe creative cloud suite adobe actually did create a beta version of photoshop for the m1 max and that app actually works really well on this it's sort of like a glimpse of what lightroom can be on the m1 mac but there are still some apps that wouldn't work even with Rosetta 2, like the Docker app over here. So when this happens, the environmental error box will pop up and you simply have to wait for developers to update it. Although I have to say it's getting there. After all, this is just the first gen M1 Max and it's only going to get better and we have to give some time to software developers to update the apps for the M1 Max. Yeah, just hold on. It will happen. It will come to the good stuff now. When the app is actually optimized for the M1 Mac, it's incredibly fast. So I use Final Cut to edit all my stuff and it is native to the M1 Mac. So here's the comparison of the export times. is how the M1 Mac doesn't heat up so easily, whereas for the 16 inch, just two to three minutes into opening Final Cut, it starts heating up and the fan noise is through the roof. The moment that starts whirring and going on full speed, I have to have my Sony headphones on my ears so that you know it blocks out all the bite noise and background noise. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to focus. It is that loud. However, for the M1 Mac, only when I'm doing like super duper duper intensive stuff like multicam editing, only then will the fans start going up and you can start to feel the heat. And obviously with this, you can edit on your lap and with the 16 inch, you can never do that. I know it's kind of unfair to be comparing this 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro with the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but I kind of feel like this can compare with that. Just hear me out. 
Overall, editing on this M1 Mac was rather smooth and I could even edit and export a 4K 60fps video of this. And I'll link that video below and this is something I don't think was very possible with the previous gen Intel based MacBook Pro. Besides editing, battery life on this is pretty great. I managed to get about 17 hours of battery life just doing some light browsing and watching Netflix. So that's pretty nice. Now this is going to be a bit more personal. There are a few things on the 13 inch that makes me miss my 16 inch. And here's a bit of the context. And this is how I usually use my MacBook Pro. It's usually connected to the LG display, but I like to move it to the bed or the beanbag when I'm editing because I just like to move around and edit and not have to edit on one same spot. And that's why I prefer the 16 inch bigger screen just because more real estate is easier and better on my eyes, especially when I'm editing or watching Netflix. Next is the limited ports. Yes, these ports here are more advanced and faster than the previous generation MacBook Pros, but there are only two here as compared to the four port machine on my 16 inch. And we don't have the option to upgrade to getting more ports. So this is barely enough for someone who edits a lot off an external hard drive and who needs an external display because of the small screen size. But thank god this LG screen has USB-C so it also charges my computer and that's one less cable I have to worry about. This is also when USB-C hubs come in super handy. Here are some options from Hyper and Sataki but I'll leave a few more options in the description box below. And finally, speakers. Now the speakers on the 13 inch just cannot match those on the 16 inch and here's a comparison. You might want to put on headphones for this. You definitely have a way better experience while you're watching a movie on the 16 inch. But honestly, if I've never used a 16 inch, the 13 inch does the job perfectly well. And if you want better audio quality, you can always get headphones like these. Overall, this is an insanely powerful machine for its size. I mean, the M1 chip is impressive. I am very, very impressed by it. But it's not for all. For some of you who are using this for work or school, some apps may not be compatible with the M1 Mac just yet. But here's a website that tells you if an app is Apple Silicon ready or not. And I'll link this below. This base model is great for anyone who needs a laptop that is super portable, super fast, and of really, really great battery life. It is definitely of a much higher value than the previous generation Intel chip MacBook Pros. The storage is not a lot, but I added off an external drive, so it's fine. If comparing between the M1 MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, here's the main difference. The Pro has a longer battery life, active cooling for heavy workloads whereas the air has no fans at all so that is completely dead silent. Yeah. The Pro also has a slightly brighter screen and the touch bar. So if you like all of that, the Pro is what you want. But I'm holding off the first generation M1 Max and here's why. The 16 inch MacBook Pro with Apple Silicon. Now that's something I'm super interested in. I want all of this greatness in a bigger screen and it will be interesting to see how Apple integrates a dedicated graphics card into it. And that's it for today. I hope this helped some of you. I'll leave all the links below. And if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more. As usual, I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay minty and cheery. Goodbye.